Okay, today I wanted to take a look at my uh, Sony PlayStation DTL T10,000H development tool, or it's uh, abbreviated just to PS2 Tool, uh, that's for short. Um, it was developed by Sony and was sold direct to game studios for game development. Um, this unit connects to a PC workstation with the SDK on it and uh, was also used to uh, run burned games and also retail games as well. There were multiple versions of this unit available at the time, the T10,000, the T10,000H, the T10,000HA and the T15,000 which was a development tool with a performance analyzer built in. You turn the system on by pressing the uh, left hand button on the top which is, goes green, uh, a long say, three second um, press it boots the system. Uh, it starts up as a, in a Linux operating system and then the PS2 tool obviously boots in from that. It's got a DVD drive which is a standard uh, PS2 DVD drive as I believe you can swap it out if you're even in trouble. You've got a reset switch on the top and a uh, soft shutdown. Right so we're going to take uh, a look inside now. Um, this is the uh, base platform. This bit uh, you quite rare these bits to come undamaged. The blue little add-ons on the side are usually uh, broken off so I was quite lucky to get one with uh, all the feet intact. These side panels are quite tricky you have to lift them very gently push the whole assembly to the left and then it should just very gently as I'm making it look very hard here but it is uh, usually just clicks forward and off they come. Underneath this leaves the uh, copper magnetic strip um, which obviously just earths all the system they've really gone overboard I don't understand why they use the copper tape. Um, same applies to the other side just a very you have to be quite careful because there's a, a few tabs that you can break off especially on the DVD drive eject button you can break the little tab off and then that renders that almost useless. So once you've got the side panels off out of the way then there's uh, I've used some captain tape to re-stick the copper um, tape that was originally on there. It's just a bit easier to get off than trying to use uh, the copper tape was particularly a git to get off. Um, I don't think my system had actually been apart until I'd actually looked at it myself. Um, so uh, I did have a look round inside just to see, make sure everything was going okay before I booted it when I got it. So peeling back the copper tape reveals the top plate. Now there's uh, two screws in the top, two screws in the middle which carry the hard drive and two screws at the edge. Then that just slots forward and hey presto there's the guts of the machine. What we see inside are the uh, normal sort of IDE cables. Nothing particularly uh, unusual there on that side of things. On top there's a little uh, cable with a little door to board which carries the um, on off switch and the reset switches and the LEDs on the front panel. The bit on the top is known as the Moecan, obviously you can see the, the similarities there. That clicks onto the top, very similar to the way the sides do but really just seems to be there for decoration to make it similar to the retail PS2. This is the um, CPU card, it's a PCI-815VE. It's a socket 370 uh, Celeron uh, processor board. Uh, then underneath that, we have the MIPS 3 CPU and the uh, graphics synthesizer, which form the uh, PS2 side of the unit. Some expansion slots there, and a bit of a door to board, and some extra bits and bobs to obviously make the Linux side communicate and control and monitor the uh, PlayStation 2 side. That's the DVD drive there which is known to be being quite problematic for sticking in and out and uh, drive belts failing, the normal Blu-ray sort of blue DVD sort of troubles. There's the two hard drives and the power supply for the whole of the unit. That's the back with all the cards and everything removed. So back together, that's what she looks like. Massive tower in structure, a massive Gret lump. Very impressive bit of kit. This is the rear of the unit. So uh, at the back, obviously on that uh, little half CPU card is the PS2 mouse, keyboard, VGA graphics and uh, networking. And then obviously there's the, uh, that's like a, a PC IMA card sort of slot, we'll come to that a little bit later on. Those um, VGA 
ports and the net bits are all covered up. They don't, I had to remove a plate to gain access to that. They do come covered up as standard. That's your standard PS, uh, you know, AV out. That's a VG out, S video out, and there's your optical out. So these are on the PS2 side. So it uh, shows that it can be um, set to NTSC or PAL, so it can run both. It's a multi you know, region free, can play burn CDs or retail CDs. This little uh, flap there just shows that you can set it to uh, DVD or emulation or tool or workstation. Um, usually it's supposed to be set to DVD and tool. I must have clicked those when I was uh, taking the sides off. There's your LEDs for your status LEDs of what's actually going on, what you've selected. This is something else unusual, it's a little remote hard drive, um, does, it plugs into that little slot at the back, so you can extend the storage of the unit, you want to do, uh, you know, add more files and stuff like that, you can just extend the storage and make that storage more portable than the inside. Right, this is uh, the uh, debugging station, the DTL H3000, and one, E, missed those bits off. So this would be primarily for bug testing, you know, it has got the room for a hard drive so you could load in through um, network means, um, you could load you know, game, game ISOs and stuff like that or you could play them straight from the DVD, um, it will play burned um, DVDs or CDs so uh, just to prove that there's the uh, my disc I did have to hand, a, a BB Navigator disc and as you can see it's a burned copy so uh, this was used primarily more for just game testing doing a quick burn or loading the game to a hard drive and having a quick test just to see if the the game that was currently game build that was currently in use was uh, obviously effective and um, this just shows that it does run retail discs as well because the uh, main sony dev tool was uh, such expensive beast um, and was really only targeted towards the programming side um, quality control testers that contested games would use this model which was obviously far cheaper for them to uh, to purchase game studios for them to purchase and again there was many different versions of this particular variant and different variants for different regions and not all could play uh, retail DVDs or CDRs so this unit's just loading up uh, a standard PS2 retail disc as you can see it can uh, read it no problem and it plays the game exactly as a retail uh, unit would have done. Some of those test units didn't have a hard drive bay, they had a PC CIA card slot where you could add like a network card onto it so that you could add that function to uh, like an external hard drive like I was the, uh, showed on the main dev unit. Obviously game testers would be using this uh, feature to uh, look at what was going on in the game, see if there's any graphical issues, you could walk through walls or any, you know, the frame rate issues were dropping at certain points. All these things were used to make sure the game would run properly on these uh, dev tools. Okay, so we're going to move on to the uh, a retail one. Um, the reason I want to mention this retail one, it's uh, a Japanese one, um, but it is one of the early ones, so it, it just shows that this is the uh, the slot at the back uh, that connects into the external hard drive. So I just wanted to show that one just to see that there were models that you could utilise um, that extra storage bay. And it was how all the infrastructure married in with each other. You know, the, the, lots of the things on the system could be used on other parts of the system. The whole ecosystem was quite, uh, quite well thought out at the time. And there it goes, you can plug this obviously straight into the PS2 dev tool exactly the same. So you could transfer your builds or your test programs to you know, virtually all of the ecosystem. So there's the PS tool and the test tool. Um, just a run round and a run through obviously those bits of kit that I own. Um, really enjoyed having these, I love that uh, beast of a tool, it's got such presence. But uh, if you made it this far, uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.